Hi, I'm Bailey, and I'm also joined here by Jen, and we are from the Middendorf Cradell branch of the St. Charles City County Library. Today, we're going to show you how you can make a lamp out of almost anything. And this is easier than you might think. Making your own lamp is a really fun way to make something totally unique and customize your space. And it's also a fun gift idea. Here are some tools and supplies that you might need to make your lamp. And I say might because some of it depends on what object you're using to make into a lamp. But we used a drill and drill bit, safety glasses, a screwdriver, and this one's a number two Phillips head screwdriver, or what you might consider just like a regular screwdriver. So it's not too big, not too small. A pair of needle nose pliers, and you might need some adjustable pliers or a wrench to tighten any bolts. You also need a lamp wiring kit, and just a note about those. They're available at most hardware stores and also some craft stores and of course online. You may also be able to use the wiring from a thrifted lamp that still works or just a cheap lamp. It does take some extra tools and skills though, so buying a wiring kit is probably best for beginners. And you also want to pay attention to the color of the metal and the cord, because those things you can't really change. And also check what size bulb it takes. Do you want just a regular bulb size or something smaller like a candelabra bulb? You also want to look at the wattage that the kit allows. So will you be able to use a bright enough bulb for your purposes? And then of course we used a light bulb and again making sure it's the correct size and wattage for the wiring kit that we got. And you can have some fun with the light bulbs. There's a lot of different fun kinds, different colors. You could get like an old fashioned Edison bulb, for example. And then you'll want of course, the item that you want to turn into a lamp. And we are using this old thermos today. And we'll talk a little bit more about different objects in just a minute. And then some other things that are kind of optional are a lamp shade. This could also be reused or thrifted, or you can buy a new one. And you'll just want to make sure what kind of attachment it has, like if it has a harp or if you need to buy one, or you don't even have to use a shade if you don't want to, but just make sure it kind of works with your object or your lamp base. And then another optional thing is some felt to attach onto the bottom of the object that will protect whatever surface it's sitting on. And then you may also need scissors and glue. Here are some things to keep in mind when you're looking for an item to turn into a lamp. Will it fit into the space you want to use it? And will it look nice in that space? You also want to make sure it's not something that will catch on fire or melt if it gets too hot. It should also be heavy enough to stand up on its own. And keep in mind that adding a lampshade will make it even more likely to tip over. So you can attach a base to the item if you need to like a piece of wood or a metal base or another heavy item like a book. And then ask yourself, does it already have a hole in the top and the side? If not, is it something that it's okay to drill holes into? And do you have the access to the tools that you need to drill the holes? And just a note on that, some lamp wiring kits have an option to have the wire go out the back of the top instead of down through the object. So as long as you've thought through those questions, then you can get creative and think outside the box. Here are some ideas on the screen. And of course, anything else you can think of. Maybe you could look through your room or your attic or basement or go thrift shopping, one of my favorite things to do. Or if you have a hobby, you could base it around that. So in this video, we're using a thermos. But I also have this super cool lamp made out of a book, of course, and it doesn't have a shade and it uses an Edison bulb. 
So it's just another example of how you can customize something for your space. Alrighty, let's get started making our lamp. So the object that I'm turning into a lamp is an old thermos. And I could just use the whole thing and just have the light bulb coming out of the top of the lid, but I decided that I liked it a little bit better without the lid, so I'm just gonna set that aside and use it like this. And kind of the most important thing when you're making a lamp out of something is there needs to be a, either an existing hole in the top or you need to create one. So I could use it like this, but this is actually too big of a hole for the lamp wiring kit. So I would need some kind of filler to fill that in. So I figured why not just use the lid that already fits in there and just make a smaller hole through it. So what I did at home, I'm gonna show you a picture of it, is I just used a drill press to make sure that this hole was completely straight all the way through, but you can just use a regular drill. That works just as well. I'm gonna put on my safety glasses. And then I'm just gonna demonstrate how you would do this. Anytime you're drilling, you wanna make sure that your um, the drill is straight up and down this way as well as this way. And then you just gently press through. Now, of course, if I were actually drilling this, I would wanna make sure that there's something below the object I'm drilling into to make sure that I protect my surface. And you wanna make sure that you mark the center of your item ahead of time. Okay, so next we're going to open up our lamp wiring kit. This is what it looks like, um, how it comes from the store. I got this one online, but they sell them lots of places. You can also, if you're feeling brave, use wiring from an existing lamp. Just be extra careful. All right. The main advantage to buying a lamp kit is that it comes with these instructions and tells you what order to do everything in. So the first step is to put this threaded piece in here. But, so I wanna do that to make sure that it fits, that I drilled the right size hole, and I did. But the, this piece that came with my kit is actually a little bit too short for this thermos lid. So I just ran to the hardware store and picked up a, a longer one. Another alternative, if you don't wanna buy a whole other piece, is you can just use something to kind of extend this, because I don't really need the threaded part necessarily to go any, you know, all the way through. I just need something to keep it steady. So Bailey came up with this idea of, you could use a straw, because it fits just right and just do it like that. And you don't need to worry about the fact that, you know, the straw, um, you don't have to worry about it like melting or something like that really because the, the cord that it's gonna be touching is insulated. So, you know, as long as the cord doesn't get hot just being plugged in, which it shouldn't, then you should be fine. But since I did go ahead and get this longer piece, we're gonna use that. And then the instructions tell you what order to put all of these nuts and washers. I did add two extra washers just to mine just because I have this dip here in the lid and I needed to kind of fill up that extra space. But the ones that come with the kit work just fine most of the time. And you don't need to tighten everything just yet because we're still having to, you know, figure out exactly how far up we want this. So just kind of putting it there as a placeholder. So ideally you want a nut underneath the item as well on this threaded piece so that you, so that it can't move. You're going to put something above and below it to kind of sandwich it exactly where it should go. But if you don't, have this bottom piece or if the the threaded part doesn't go all the way through 
that's okay. You just for sure have to have something at the top. So here's that extra washer I was talking about. And then this is the base of what's called the lamp harp. Your kit may not have this because a lot of lamps nowadays um, don't have the lamp harp, which is this thing. Looks like the instrument, a harp. Um, some of them already have, the lampshades have this kind of in the lampshade already. And then you just stick the whole shade on there. But with this kit, it comes like that, so we have to put this little base on for this to go into. Okay. Now I don't technically have to have this bolt above this lamp harp base, but I had to use the one that should go up there down here for that spacing, so that's why I got an extra one. Okay. All right, so that's generally the order. And then the next part is is the um, the base of where the light bulb goes into. And I'm going to show you in a little separate video how to do the underwriter's knot for the wiring. Okay, before we tie our knot in the wire, <clears throat> we're just going to make sure that these are on the right spot on this threaded piece here. So you're just going to put this this is the base of where the light bulb goes into, and that has a stopping point. So then we just need to scoot all of this up to the edge of that piece. Okay, there we have that all nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. And then this is the part that it can be pretty different depending on what kind of lamp wiring kit you have. So in a kind of regular standard lamp, the wire goes through the middle, like the core of, of the lamp, like in here, and it comes out the bottom at the back, right? So, and that's where it would go and then you'd plug it in. And that is one option, but then we would have to drill another hole in the bottom of this. And depending on the object that you're using, that could be a really easy thing to do. But with this item, it's kind of tricky because it's round, it, it rolls and moves around. Um, and, you know, I just didn't feel like messing with that. So the kit that I got is kind of cool because it also has this option of having the wire come out of here instead of going through the thermos and coming out the back. So we can just have it coming out like that. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. Just to make my life easier. So you're gonna put the wire through that little hole. And just pull it through. Not all the way or anything, just some. And just for reference, the plug that goes in the wall is at the other end. All right, now we come to the knot that I was talking about. It's called the underwriter's knot. And the point of it is just to keep the pressure off of these screws, because this is what we're going for. We're gonna attach these stripped ends of the wire where it's just bare metal. We're gonna wrap them around these screws, right? But instead of just having it just plain like that, we're gonna make a little like loop-de-loop -loop pretzel looking knot to s distribute that stress, the pressure. All right, and you wanna make sure that you do this knot after you have the wire through either this part or through this, this threaded piece that goes in the middle of your object because you can't pull it back out once there's a big knot on it. 
All right, so when the wire comes in the kit, it is all stuck together, kind of like a Twizzlers, and you just kind of peel it apart like that. Not all the way down, just just some, maybe, maybe three, four inches is plenty. And then for our knot, we're gonna start by making this kind of M shape or W. And first we're just gonna wrap this one over here. Just make this loop, hold that down. And then with this other side, we're going to make a loop. We're gonna stay on top of this one behind and up through this other loop. So in the end it kind of looks like a pretzel or maybe like scissor handles and I'm just gonna pull that a little bit just so it doesn't fall apart but we don't need it to be super tight and then we can kind of get this extra out of our way. Okay we're almost done. So the next part is the electric, electrical part. So of course you wanna make sure that it is not plugged in. And it's best to have an adult with you. All right, so if you look at the wire, it's probably gonna be really hard to tell on the video, but if you feel this way on the wire, one of these is ribbed, it has like a bump going down it in you know, a few spaces, and then this one is just completely smooth. And it might be easier to tell further down the wire because they both have a little bit of a ridge on them from where I separated them. So if I feel down here, that one clearly has a bumpy texture. So that is your neutral wire. So that neutral wire, and my directions tell me this, the neutral wire is the one that goes to this silver screw, and then the hot wire goes to the brass or gold looking screw. So first I just make sure that these are away, you know, screwed out a little bit. So I have room to work. I'm gonna take my neutral wire and what you're doing is you're just going to wrap it around the screw. So I have these tiny little jewelry pliers, or if you have just needle nose pliers, those will work great. The other thing to keep in mind is when you tighten the screw, you're turning it this direction, right? Righty tighty. So you want to make sure that you're not making the wire want to come off. So I'm wrapping it clockwise. So then when I go like this and tighten it, it's making the wire want to wrap around it, not come off. Okay. I'm just gonna tighten that. Not crazy tight, but just you know pretty firm so that it's not gonna fall off or anything. You also just wanna make sure that the wire isn't touching itself here, so it doesn't make a complete circle wrapping around the screw. It's like covering all but a quarter or so of it. Okay, and then we're gonna do the hot wire around the brass screw. There we go. So now I'm gonna scoot this knot a little bit up. So we don't have all that extra cord trying to fit in here. I'm just gonna kind of pull it through. And before you snap this in, I like to test it and make sure that it works because once you snap this in here, it is really, really hard to get it back off. So you wanna be really careful when you do this because if you touch these while it's plugged in, it could shock you. So we're just gonna leave it here, or I might, I'm probably just gonna set it right here in my lamp. And I'm gonna test it and make sure that it works. Okay, so before I plug it in, I'm just going to gently pull this up 
so that I can screw the light bulb in and then I'm going to plug it in. Okay, and making sure not to touch anywhere near the wires, although they are kind of covered now. I can just touch this part, screw in the bulb. And there we go, it works. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it now. All right, and I'm gonna take that bulb out. Don't wanna break it. All right, so now it's for sure unplugged so I can touch this again. So I'm just gonna make sure I have all the excess out of the way. Turn this just a little bit because I have this back part of the thermos. I want that to be where the cord comes out on the not as pretty side. And then you just press this in and like I said just make sure double check yourself that you have everything the way you want it because this is kind of the point of no return because this is technically possible to take apart again but I have never done it successfully. So just press that in there. And it has these little tabs that kind of latch on. There we go. Okay, so you heard that click. You can definitely tell it's not going anywhere. Okay. And then Bailey is going to show you what to do from here. All right, so now that Jen has done all the hard parts, I get the fun, easy part at the end. <laughs> and that is gonna be putting the shade on. So there's a few different parts with that. This is called a harp, and some lampshades have kind of this part built in. You should be able to figure it out. And the lampshade will fit on this part, and this is a finial that screws on the top to hold the shade on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these metal pieces out of the way and <laughs> you just squeeze the heart because it's going to fit into these, this kind of bracket part. Super easy. <laughs> and before I put the shade on, I'm going to put the light bulb in. It's just easier having the shade out of the way. I'm probably like gonna cover my face with this. <laughs> so it just sits on there and I can screw this on. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed learning how to make a lamp out of almost anything. And if you liked this class, you can catch our other class, how to make a clock out of almost anything. And that was posted on December 7th. So check that out on our classes and events calendar at mylibrary.org. Thank you.